What's great about this diagram is that it shows the uh, electrical events and what's actually going on in the heart and with the ECG. So you can see in the very top left, you see what represents the P waves. You can see those atria depolarizing as the impulse moves through the atria. Then the um, atrial depolarization, so the end of the P wave, and then the QRS complex starts. The, the atrial repolarization is covered up. And then you get all the way to the second column. You can see the ventricular, uh, vent ventricles depolarize. And then as the waveform moves to the apex of the heart, and as it goes, you know, through the uh, starts to move to the Purkinje fibers, then the um, you see the T wave at the end, and then the ventricular repolarization again, the completion of the T wave, and then the cycle starts all over again. And if you look at between the pressure in the heart, systolic and blood pressure, uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, the ventricular depolarization coincides with what you uh, with systolic blood pressure and then diastole again you know the between the T wave the ventricles are filling so the end of the T wave and the beginning of the P wave so the QRS also coincides with uh, um, systolic blood pressure and the blood being ejected from the heart So as we mentioned, the ECG, it gives us a 3D picture of the heart. So what Eindhoven did is he said, all right, we're gonna pass an electrical current, you know, um, along through the body and we're gonna look at the heart. So when the way you look at the heart, the your heart sits in the middle of your chest, but the apex points to the left, to the bottom left of your chest. And so, when the electrical activity occurs, the electrical, the waveform follows the depolarization route. So depending on where we are looking with these electrodes, we're either gonna have a positive deflection on the ECG paper, or we may have something that's negative, that's upside down, because it's looking at the heart either in the opposite way the wave is going or it's looking at it from the bottom, looking at the bottom surface of the heart. So Eindhoven developed his triangle, said we're gonna pass these electrodes from your right arm to your left arm, and then from your you know left leg to your right arm. And then, so if you look at the positive and the negative, and then your right leg is going to be your um, ground. And so, when you have an ECG and it's a resting ECG, they will actually put the electrodes on your wrists and your ankles. So a resting ECG will be, you know, the electrodes will be put on your wrists and ankles. Now for exercise, you can see on the right side of the slide, they move those right arm and left arm and right leg and left leg electrodes to your torso because we want to make it easier for exercise. So this is called, and we'll cover this in lab, the, the Mason-Liker for, you know, formation. So we are going to look at, so that's your arms and legs, and then these are your, what are called your uh, percordial leads, your V leads. So there's only one on the right side. So when you're careful in lab, be sure that you're putting these on the right way because your heart sits on the left side of your heart. I mean, they're, are some abnormalities where people are born with their heart facing the wrong way, but that's extremely rare, but it does happen. So the electrodes go on the left side of your heart. So, uh, you know, so on the left side of the torso, and if you're putting them on in a mirror, that also makes it a little confusing as well.